here's another math issue. Um, sometimes people don't understand what you could afford. You know, you may think this is a uh, how you call it a uh, a beef Angus tenderloin whole, right? So that means you got a whole tenderloin roast from Angus beef, a Angus cow, and so normally it's nineteen ninety nine a pound. That's twenty dollars a pound, and you say, oh, that is a lot of money. But have you tried to go to the restaurant and have a filet mignon? There, I don't think that you could have a serving of filet mignon for probably less than 35 bucks now. I haven't gone to a steakhouse in a long time. But here you could see it's on special, or was on special, for $9.99 a pound. So instead of paying $160.92, I saved $80.50. So I was able to buy this whole thing for $80.42. Now, that is still a lot of money, you say, and yes, it is, but by buying the whole thing, and you know, if I'd like to cut it, I'd like to cut it into steaks myself, but at the store, they would be more than happy to cut it into steaks for you to save you time and trouble. But anyhow, this, this roast, I could probably get anywhere from seven to eight, maybe even more meals out of it. So for two people, $10 for a filet mignon steak dinner, I think that's pretty, that's a dirt cheap. And of course you don't eat filet mignon every day. You eat them once a week, once a month, and it lasts you a long time. And I'll show you how, how I cut them and how I package them to, to so that it would stay in the freezer for over two years and they'll still be good. We'll be right back. So now the packaging is removed and uh, since it's a lot longer than my cutting board, I had to cut it in half to accommodate that. So we start with this end, and um, usually you can see um, there's a lot of fat and maybe even gristles along the along the, the side or in between the muscles. And what I do is I peel it back. Sometimes it's real easy to, to get rid of the, these um, gristles and sinews and whatever. So you could trim that off. And uh, right here, this is a very big piece, very tough um, gristles right here. And if you want to keep it like a big, big steak, you could keep it together. But or you, if uh, like in this case, this one is pretty. This this uh, loin is pretty big, so I could just I could take this part off, and basically you could almost just pull it off. And then this way, if you look at it, that's fairly clean after you pull that side off, right? And these are fat, and don't, don't, don't pull them off because that's where the flavor comes in. So what you Which can... Which is different than gristle and mm -hmm, sinew mm -hmm. and everything else. Yeah, and then like right here, these are the, what they call the silver skin. If you want, you could, you could take them off. You take your knife and just kind of go underneath and pull and it. I've never gotten any silver out of it, so <laughs> I don't know why they call it that. Well, you know, did you know they make very good, um, um, how you call it, thread, that, that if you could sew things together, hmm. that actually very strong. That's how they, before they would have modern uh, cotton thread, this is what they used to sew things together. But anyhow, don't need, don't need to be too picky there. So, and then you could cut, you could cut it the way you want, you know, like 
Some people like it real thick, and some people like it a thinner. Um, I prefer kind of between half and three quarter inch because then you could cook it, and you could have a uh, medium rare or pink center real quick without overcooking the the outside, you know, of of your steak. But if you have it too too thick, the outside you could have a, a thick crust already, you know, and your beef on the on the uh, on each end would be overcooked. And then inside still red, you know. Some people like that, you know. So it depends on how you like your steak cooked, you know. Then you you cut it the way you like. So that in itself, it's probably good for one meal, <clears throat> for one person. So see, two steak. Oops, let's see. So that's for one meal right there. That's two meals. I think I'm getting close to one inch right there because they're getting a little bit smaller so I have to go a little bit thicker. Three. And we'll save that on the side and let's do this big part. Now this part we need to we have a lot more junky stuff a lot on it, so we want to trim that off. And you can see right here, it's got a lot of gristle there. We're gonna take that off. Make sure your knife is sharp, and always, always watch what you're doing. <laughs> yes. Pay attention. A few times I cut myself, but this really basically you just kind of pull it up, and then run your knife underneath. So see, it came come off pretty easily. But really, it is important to have a sharp knife, and and don't ever cut your, don't use your knife on, on plastic or glass cutting board, because none of those things will give into your knife and your, that will kill your knife blade in no time. So it doesn't matter how good of your your knife is. It only takes a matter of days that you could ruin your good knife. And this is my favorite knife. My mom sent me this from Okinawa, Japan way back in 1980. Oh no, she brought it back. So I got this knife from her, uh, nineteen eighty-six. No, eighty-seven. Eighty, yeah, nineteen eighty-seven. And so, ever since then, and owning require good sharpening like twice. I had to send it to my brother in New Jersey and have his his uh sushi chefs to help me sharpen these and I'm trying to maintain it as much as I can anyhow so we want to remove this, these silver skin and like I said though this is not required you don't need to you know some people don't mind don't mind it and usually I try to remove it if it's as easy as this time. Sometimes they're not as easy to remove. Then I'll just kind of forget it. But as you can see, with a good knife, it's really easy to remove these sinews. And then there's, there's fat in here. I'm just going to leave that alone. Let's see if I could remove a little more here or if it's need to be. Oh, there's more in here. So 
Okay, now we're going to cut some steak here. See right here, you can see that that it's that is a piece of gristle right there. So but because of where it is, it's too hard to uh well, to not necessarily like right here. Mm -hmm. That's a, a mostly gristle. So if you want, you could pull it off. You know, well, we could do the same thing with the other one, but I don't want to do that. The other, you know, the lower portion. Mm -hmm. So let's see, one, two, three, four meals already right there. Five. Six. Seven. So that's eight good size steak right there and I still got this portion left and I still got this portion left and quite often I would actually these I could probably make another meal out of it so instead of uh, one steak per per person in this case it would be two steak like that. So that's another meal. So there you go. See, less than ten dollars per meal, and we've got leftovers that we could cut into pieces to where we could use it for breakfast, steak and egg. And so it's less than ten dollars for two person, uh, two two serving of filet mignon, and and then you have leftover for steak and egg. What else can you make with that stews or? Uh, no, stew. Re you you'll be wasting your money on on, on using filet mignon for for mm -hmm. stew because you you could do the chuck roast. Yeah. Because um, these don't require a lot of cooking, and if you cook, if you overcook them, you're just gonna have some mush. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a glorified pot of, pot of meat again. You know, we don't need glorified pot of meat. You know. Um, but they, they take almost no time at all to cook. Like two minutes on one side, two minutes on the other side, your meat is done. So it's cheap, it's delicious, and very nu nutritional. And it's affordable at home. Enjoy. So the, the whole filet mignon, a whole beef tenderloin roast, Got us two, four, six, eight, a steak dinner, right here that to be put away in the freezer, and then we have one meal for tonight, and then a whole bunch for uh, maybe one or two steak and egg. And now, uh, this is what I do. I put two uh, sing, uh, portions of of uh, steak inside this uh, clean produce bag. And then I just fold them over like that. And then uh, put in the food saver bag that you could, you know. And just follow the instruction. Uh.
So that's done. And what I would do is I would put I would use marker to put BF for for beef. Uh, then I say tender. Then I know that's beef tenderloin, and then I'll put the date on it, and then put it in the freezer. And they could keep like that in the freezer for like over two years. Whereas if you just the regular packaging, after three to six months, they already get freezer burn and everything. The beef in itself it would deteriorate. It. You're talking about the packaging that it comes in. Yeah. If you put it in the freezer. Yeah. Okay. So then after a couple months, it always starts. Well. The, the, the kind of packaging that the whole loin came will probably last longer because it's much thicker. But I'm talking about the typical grocery store packaging. Mm -hmm. They won't last long. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like um, like I had my, my brother got me some, some uh, sushi gray salmon. And I didn't think about putting in the in the bags like this or sealed. Right. Just by what he, the way he packaged his, his, because he go through salmons like, he probably go through a hundred pounds of salmon in one, in one week. And so he doesn't package any better than he wrapped them with, in the paper towel and then saran wrapped it. And then he could put it in the freezer in that way. So he processed some of the salmon for me and I keep it, I put it away that way and they didn't last long. They, they weren't good after like six months. But the next time I got a little bit smarter and I um, I keep the packaging that he, the way he did it and then I put in the in the food saver pack. After two years, they are still good. You know, maybe, maybe um, a little bit softer in texture, but otherwise they taste just as good. So anyhow, this is how you put them away, you know. And if you don't have a food saver, then you wrap them the way I, I do them with the, the way I do it. Uh, it's put inside the, the, the produce bag, squeeze out as much water as you, I mean air as you can, and put it in your Ziploc bag, freezer Ziploc bag. That in itself would also help to keep it longer. But, but this is the best way to do it. Right. All right. And you may ask me, why is my roll of <laughs> bag is up here? It's because they are, they are, this, this thing is only made to accommodate maybe a 16, 17, maybe 20 feet roll. And I actually bought off the Amazon a 50 feet roll. So even though I use quite a bit already, it is still unable to accommodate that, so that's okay. I'm not picky. Um, I like to save money. So I put it up there and cut it, cut what I need, you know. So you use these to, uh, to, to keep your food longer in the freezer while you still have electricity. Thank you.